Walking down Union Street in between Maine and Gore, most people would probably not be able to tell what made this space so unique. But 50 years ago, this area was known to Vancouver residents as Hogan's Alley. So the, the thing about Hogan's Alley, it was never an entirely black community. It was always a mixed community of Italians, Asians, and blacks. But for the black community, it was important in that, um, you know, there's one a study that was done in the 50s that said, they estimated that probably you know, the largest portion of black people in the city living in one place are here. And so that way it was black identified, but it was very mixed. And so you got really interesting cross-cultural relationships going on. And so as a black community, it was very West Coast. From 1910 to the late 1960s, Hogan's Alley was seen by outsiders as a den of crime and squalor. This view was built on ideas of race and class that did not accurately represent this community to those who lived there. When you look at interviews, they talk about uh, all sorts of social ills and crime and things like that, but also all of that happening right next to you know, very honest working people, small business owners, church people, kids, and so forth. The black community that settled here came as a result of proximity to the nearby train stations, where black men were traditionally hired as porters. Due to racial tensions, most of these men were either unable to afford rent anywhere outside the Chinatown area or were simply unwelcome. It was here that they came to live and where they established the heart of Vancouver's black community. By the 40s, 600 black people lived in Vancouver and for the next decade, the neighborhood underwent a significant cultural transformation. I mean, Hogan's Alley sounded like it was a very vibrant place in terms of music and, um, and nightlife. And so, on the one hand, there were a lot of different um, jazz and uh, R&B artists who were passing through the city who, who went there. Urban renewal was a popular concept in the United States around the 1960s and was viewed as an effective method to improve slum areas of the city, which was at the time called blight. Black communities were often targeted because they were generally poor and therefore possessed very little power to do much about it. In 1971, this is what happened to Hogan's Alley to make way for the Georgia Viaduct. We had such a small black community, it's almost easier to see that here because the community was literally centralized in these tiny few blocks. And that happens to be exactly where the first phase of the plan was, where the viaduct was. It's that little area that was for the black community. In 1972, the Georgia Viaduct was completed, two blocks of Hogan's Alley were destroyed, and the community was scattered. Since then, there has not been another centralized black community in Vancouver. However, the black population continues to grow with the city and now sits at over 23,500 people. With the impending demolition of the viaducts, the city is presented with a unique opportunity. Um, but what I hope is that out of these new plans that are happening down around taking the viaducts down, I hope there will be the creation of a black cultural center some place where the black community can continue to meet intentionally at certain times of year for certain um, uh, uh, social purposes and to keep our history and an archive there of uh, what happened to the black community in the city so it is remembered. About 20 years ago, people just looked at you with a blank stare when you said there was a black community in fact, They didn't really believe you unless they were over 50 and had experienced it themselves. Now I feel like people it's not just a thing in the black community that people talk about it in a disgruntled way. It's now like, I, since I think Vancouver wants this. I think generally people in Vancouver want an accurate representation of their history. Hogan's Alley was the hub of the black community in Vancouver from the beginning of the 20th century to its demolition in the early 70s. While it was not home to a particularly large population, the history of Hogan's Alley is rich with remarkable success stories, famous faces, and a tragic ending with a glimmer of hope for the future.